Hi, I'm Mary Helena Clark. I'm the director and writer of Exhibition, a short film included in this year's Forum Expanded program. Hello and welcome to the 37th Teddy Award. My name is Jan Felix Wuttig and today I'm here with director Mary Helena Clark to talk about the film Exhibition. Mary Helena, pleased to have you here. Thank you for having me. And thank you for, for Exhibition. Um, um, I found that it was quite a, a very complex, very thought-provoking film basically well on on the on the surface about you could say it's about two exhibitions and uh the way well the way people interacted with them and what their interactions meant maybe you could tell us in your own words what what um how the movie came to pass yeah i mean it it definitely is um sort of organized um in two parts um like particularly through these two women's lives and their relationship to objects but like inside of that a lot of other citations references and p artworks are sort of shuttled in um and i was interested in making a film that sort of used the the container of the movie as an exhibition space. And um, I think past works of mine have been interested in like a direct address and um, different ways of um, thinking about um, like the uh, kind of liveness of in a, in a cinema space. Um, so I wanted to think about that kind of like through like the spatial construction of a gallery or a museum room mm -hmm. and how we could like really foreground like act, an act of looking to maybe complicate um sort of fixed ideas around like subject object relationships mm -hmm. and that try to come up with come up with or through my own research find people and characters that had really interested um kind of uncategorizable relationships with objects yeah. um so i think that in the past like other movies of mine have dealt with like a slipperiness of an image or a sound or like how those pairings might kind of upend our expectations mm -hmm. and i just found so much in the biography of um Ayurita berliner mauer and mary richardson um a way of sort of reinventing the world through their desires and orientations yeah and i, I where there i mean was it always um where those two kind of um figures always gonna be the the foundation of your film or did you kind of like curate this and 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 kind of had different ideas about different exhibitions or different different ways of of thinking about that that subject object relationship I um I mean there's always like doing and undoing and mm -hmm. but I think an early there's like so many potential starts for this film and I like I could like probably contradict myself in talking <laughs> about it but um one was um a, a photo that I saw of Berliner Mauer like by the Berlin Wall holding the miniature mm -hmm. and um, this idea that it was a wedding picture, that it was documenting, it was like, it was documenting a wedding and it wasn't just a figure in space, like it wasn't a figure in background. And that yeah. if we learned about um, who she was and how she operated in the world, like it completely changed the way that we read that image. And I found that to be so like energizing and just a way of like engaging with like any kind of material, like audio, visual or objects. Um, so that image was a starting point. Um, another one was is sort of a smaller piece by Marcel Duchamp that I'm blinking on the name of, but it's this wedge that he said um, he used to create the vagina of the body that's in another work called a tondonne, yeah. where you look into these peepholes of this um, what looks kind of like an old farmhouse door and you see this sort of artificial landscape and this body kind of lying 
in the landscape holding this lantern. And um, I, I don't know, just the idea of this wedge um, being an art object and like thinking of what like it as um, like the creation of uh, I don't like of the this like like very unnatural I mean kind of like gash like body yeah. um, was really interesting to me um, and I went and filmed that in the Philadelphia Art Museum and realized that I didn't want to make anything that was too tethered to such a canonical work and that I mm. was rather more interested in creating kind of a network that pulled across all these different threads. Um, yeah, yeah. So then when the film became less like, um, maybe like singularly focused on an artwork, um, bringing in Mary Richardson's story and art vandalism became really important because this idea of like hijacking and reinventing a symbol or an artwork um, felt way more aligned with like the spirit of the film. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I found it had film had such a liberating force as well because it it, it it you know it changes so much around about how we think about art but also how we think about you know like how we think about objects in an exhibition how we think about objects in general because we're so kind of like um you know we, we're under this kind of uh, regime of of you know standing in front of something and being the spectator of something and not being able to interact with it or if we're gonna interact with it we are told to do it you know and, and yeah, yeah totally <laughs> no i love that i love that um like these sort of museological spaces like have this very codified idea of what meaning is and that these figures that i was pulling into the film like like are, are there to disrupt that yeah. and that there was a line that got cut from the movie but it was so much about not touching the art and i think that the film is like so focused on tactility um in the fact you know in the way that mary richardson like out of love and out of protest stat you know penetrates the surface of the mm -hmm. painting destroys it and um there's other so there's other forms of like grasping and holding um like the scene where we watch a movie be bootlegged in a cinema is like another form of capture, you know, which is like piracy and embrace. I yeah. think that like, it's like a collector's impulse is like, you know, contains a lot of different strands like that. And then the soundtrack is really nuanced or really subtle, but um, it's a, it's a piece called breath for organ, which is, you know, which is all about the contact of breath on the pipe organ. Mm -hmm. And so I think that like that, um, like attunement to tactility and touch, like particularly in a space that's yeah. like telling you not to do that. I think like kind of amps up. Yeah. <laughs> feeling of desire. <laughs> yeah, true. And I've, I found that the, um, sort of the power of the movie develops a lot through, um the the play between its different levels so so like on the audio level on the video level um on the on the kind of mixture between text and what and 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 and, and the video for example like specifically when you have um the the i don't know if it's if it's a take from um, mary richardson's uh, uh journal or whether whether that 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 text is your own but she basically describes what she is doing right before <laughs> she attacked Velasquez painting with a hatchet um maybe you could talk a little bit about how you kind of um construct the text and video and audio to to um achieve that kind of power of the film yeah i was so happy when i found um her memoir is called laugh a defiance and um she yeah and that there is this whole dedicated pat like first person you know kind of you know retelling of what it was like to be in that space and to and like i i felt like it had such suspense that i knew i wanted to represent it in the film like mm -hmm. in its entirety the only line that i cut that was kind of painful was she describes this link of uh, of um, safety pins mm -hmm. that she uses to fasten the ax in her sleeve. And she describes it as just having one touch for like the weapon to fall. And it was very beautiful. And like, and, and, and I, but if I had it at the beginning of the text, I felt like it maybe you know, it foreshadowed too much. Yeah, um, yeah. But I think um, like, th I mean, thinking about um, looking and um, like, uh, 
an ambiguous or conflicted relationship with exhibitionism in the film that like hitting on texts that were from a first person point of view felt really exciting to bring in. Mm -hmm. um, the only kind of parallel I have for Berliner Mauer is um, the the videos that were shot in her home museum of all of her miniatures and the and the ridge over the river were her footage. So yeah. I think of that as like a way of accessing like um, like her, her way of looking at the world and like in like 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 um, engaging like seeing these things. So like for me, all of those like DV cam zooms mm -hmm. like are so full of um, intent. Um, yeah. But it was, uh, I knew that I wanted the film to be full of reproductions and appropriations and um, that I wanted to like kind of like think of myself as like a thief pulling from all these different collections. <laughs> um, so um, like where I could find quotations or a way to rewrite things was really important. Um, and to, and um, so, I, I mean, so it was just like a matter of like, how many different ways can I show like copying and reproduction um, where there's like a transformation in the act of representing a thing. So we mm -hmm. see a hand sketching the painting. We don't actually see the painting itself. Yeah. We only see the painting after it's stabbed. These newspaper clips are kind of presented in fragment. So I think that like, um, like those those layers that add like a kind of a bit of like recreation to them felt really mm -hmm. important to the piece. And also like building in an image language of aperture that we're constantly like looking through a hole um, and these peepholes can kind of serve as walls. Um, yeah. Trying to think about an image language that allowed for that kind of doubling. Like I always talk mm -hmm. about being really excited about the Duchamp piece, the Tendonne, that's like kind of obliquely referenced in the beginning of the film mm -hmm. as it not being about that artwork exactly, but really just the act of like a wall of, of a door being a wall and yeah. that kind of setting up a kind of twinning or dualism that happens throughout yeah. Yeah. Um, where like a body wishes to be a vessel or a Klein bottle is forced to be a candlestick holder that there's, there's yeah. all these exchanges <laughs> or like a wall is a lover. Yeah. yeah. Um, so just really trying to like stay in that space where um, like through these women's specific points of view and through my own writing and through an act of copying or stealing that there's like a little bit of a reinvention. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. Yeah, no, it does. And I, I found that, you know, it, it, it amplifies somehow also what, what those images signify i mean if you if you look at how berlina mauer um, um captures those miniatures it, it, it seems to be such a you know such a view of love or of affection yeah. and it just kind of um it amplifies through the fact that it is not kind of your own material well at least that's that's how i felt um yeah i think a lot of people will um sort of you know that there, there's a specific reading to the actions of the people at at the exhibition that that could be read in a very political way so so to speak to to break free of the um of the limitations let's say of of idolation in 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 case of of Mary Richardson or of you know heteronormative marriage in in case of Berlina Mauer um how important to you were were those kind of well, um, those those readings, in a sense. I mean, I mean, they were very important, and I mean, they're like that. They're at the heart of like these lives, and I mean, their ethos and their politics is like what is motivating. I think all these kind of um, like f like formal slippages that I'm talking about, and I think that um, like I wanted them to be there. And, but I also wanted this, like, I didn't want the film to be um, necessarily like recounting or didactic about like what those mm -hmm. political positions are, right? To situate Mary Richardson in a moment of like the suffragette movement. Like yeah. I didn't want the film to do that, but I wanted to take this like, um, 
like slanted angle in where they're fully present, but there's also like just um, there's 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 like this like remaking and unmaking of like an entire worldview or a phenomenological view mm -hmm. like through their own desire. Yeah. So it's like how do you kind of like talk about like these queer issues, but also let it be. I mean, I just find them both so uncategorizable mm -hmm. that I kind of wanted them to like for all of that to kind of plume up around them yeah, yeah. Um, instead of having it be like a specific lens to the material. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I just I, I love that. I love that they contain so much, you mm -hmm. know, and I hope the film honors like all all of those aspects. I certainly f found that it did that that the kind of you know, that, that queerness translated really well in the sense that it is not easily, um, sort of easily interpreted, but in a good way, you know, it, it is not easily kind of boiled down to one aspect, not told in, in such a way that you could easily pinpoint and say, okay, so that part is in there for, for the suffragette movement, or that part is in there for the the object subject relationship but it's all in there at any point i that's yeah. that's how i found yeah yeah i mean that, i find that really energizing the um like the is and the isn't and like trying to like make space for both mm -hmm. all the time i mean i think that if the movie had been like longer i would have liked to have gotten into like um, some of the turns of Mary Richardson's politics. I mean, because she became a fascist, and I, I do, <laughs> I do wish the film could have like further complicated this yeah, woman. Well, you know? yeah. Sure, yeah. We only yeah. hit, we only hit a uh, vandal poet uh, and 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 queer woman <laughs> and suffragette yeah. in my twenty-minute telling. Yeah, but I, 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 well, I didn't find that it was problematic in in any way. I, I had quite a good good time with it <laughs> um well mary helena thank you so much for for taking the time i think that thank you it yeah. was very nice to talk about the film i appreciate your your read on it yeah thank you so much i've, I've very well i had incredible time with it i, I found it very very thought-provoking and very you know uh, <laughs> at the very least Next time I go to an exhibition, I'm going to have a different feeling about it. <laughs> <laughs> I hope Perfect. the painting survive. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you again so much. And, um, well, I'm very much looking forward to seeing you at the Berlinale in a couple of days. Yeah. All right. See you soon.